Good morning Reapers, I'm Daniel and today we're going to talk about no skimmer and no socks. Now I didn't clean this before, I just took the panels off underneath my tank. I just wanted to show you guys before I even touched it. So it's probably been a few weeks since I've been under here and today I am shooting with my Canon EOS 70D and I have a shotgun microphone on the front. So I'm just testing this out, I haven't used this camera in a long time. Um, so I have no gimbal today, so if the footage is a little shaky, uh, that's why. So, let's look right in here. I'm going to have to move these lights out the way. Wow. That thing is like overgrown with Chado. I don't have gloves on, so I don't really want to put my hand in there. But I'm going to clean this out real quick. And I just wanted to talk about why you don't need a skimmer and why some people have success without a skimmer uh, and the different tanks that there are. And, and water quality has so many things to do with it. So I just took the cover off of this thing right here. and. You can see all the coralline algae on the glass. This is usually covered up. Over here we have a 55 gallon sump, or a 55 gallon tank that I turned into a sump. It's underneath the 110 tall Predator tank. This is where we keep the eel. And the crazy thing about this, if anyone watches some of the old videos, the fox face is still alive in here. He's hiding in the back. Um, can you see him? So anyway, so he's doing fine and he's in there. But one of the things I wanted to say about this system real quick is that the water flow is very slow in here. And I do have low powered lights on here, nothing fancy. But the chato that's growing is so tight and so good looking as opposed to the high flow water that's in that sump over there. So same water, same exact nutrient levels, everything. But the faster water, it doesn't really seem to to grow as well. It does collect a lot of debris, so you just grab it by the handfuls and throw it out like a, a throwaway sponge, but it just doesn't look as good as this here. So check it out, see if you can look in there. I know, I, I haven't cleaned the glass, there's coralline everywhere. Normally this is covered up, there's black panels underneath, so you can't really see in there. But as I continue to talk about why you don't need a skimmer, and what a skimmer's for, and everyone has different requirements for their tank. So you have to do your reefing calculator, which I'll post a link below. You guys should check that video out. You have to balance your tank. Now when you're cycling in the beginning, your bio load's going up and down, and you're learning your nutrient levels, how and why they're important. But a lot of people, as they have their tanks longer, they start collecting equipment, they start adding on all this stuff, and they don't even know what they're doing anymore. So sometimes I run socks, and sometimes I don't. One of the reasons why I threw in a sock today is because when my propellers went down and I had no flow in this tank whatsoever, I got a huge, huge pile of detritus in the back, right? No water flow underneath, it was terrible. So as soon as I just put a little bit of flow in there, all that detritus started kicking up. So I threw a sock in the bottom just to help collect that so I could remove it. So, as I'm talking about why you don't need a skimmer, and I keep getting off topic because there's so much to talk about um, in balancing your loads. Fish, people with a lot of fish, people who feed their tanks a lot, you're gonna want a bigger skimmer just to pull out that bio load. Not everyone has giant refugiums, and that's where you're gonna see some of these problems because you're not pulling out the nutrients fast enough, okay? Because you have a little ball of chato and it can't keep up with all the fish poop. So you need that skimmer to pull out that waste so it doesn't break down your tank and pollute your system and raise your phosphates, nitrates, and all that stuff. So you need to learn how to balance your tank properly before you add any new equipment, know what the equipment you're adding does, and have a pretty well thought out plan as how you're controlling your nutrient levels. So I love the refugiums. I hope to have more in the future, more and more display refugiums with seahorses, with different algae eaters. They're just beautiful. And like I said, this fox face down here, 
Dude, he, he will munch on any macroalgae that he can, except for that chato that's in there now. And you will see there is no algae. This rack, when I threw it in here, is completely covered in algae. That fox face devoured it, and now it's clean. So, the places where I don't have any fish to clean it, you can see some of the algae grows other types of algae in there that can be annoying sometimes. So, all right guys, I am rambling on. Just wanted to get in a couple things, kind of just keep you guys motivated with some information. I know a lot of other reefing channels, like people watch this channel. I appreciate it. Um, I love the constant feedback that I've been getting lately because you guys really do help me improve the experience for all the other reefers. Those new into the hobby, I'm trying my best to um, cover everything for everyone. I keep thinking about doing a freshwater channel instead of trying to blend fresh water with salt water. When we open the store, we're really gonna have to inform people, even on pond setups and different things like that. So I don't know how many people would like to see ponds on this channel and freshwater tanks and anything else. Just put them together or if I should make a sub channel. So also the fitness and the ketone thing, I, I do have um, a channel for that, a sub channel. So anyway guys, if you have any questions, as always, thanks for watching. Happy reefing. Until next time. What's going on, Reavers? This is just a little extra footage I wanted to add at the end of the video, just kind of show you what I'm up to. Um, this picture is just hypothetical at the moment. I just did created that just to see what the store would look like as I'm designing and figuring things out. So I don't want to tease too much, but at the same time, if you don't have a plan, you miss out on what could be. So I'm really pushing this business hard. I really want to open up, but I do need everyone's support. And I want to fill it with all the coolest tanks in the world and all the cool stuff. So that being said, check this out. I was flying my drone around trying to get some good footage and I did crash into the wall. It's hard to do everything at once. So I printed out these propeller guards and these feet so I could land in the grass, land on the floor without getting this thing caught. That's what I love about the 3D printer. This thing is pretty awesome. And I also printed out a little landing pad. So black and orange, those are our colors. So this thing's amazing, but sometimes it does fail and there's a learning curve with everything. So it's not just you go out and buy a 3D printer. There's a lot of software education involved. Um, you have to learn to fix stuff on your own. Help desk on this is, you know, not too bad, but but anyway, there you guys go. Just give me a little extra info to keep you informed. And as always, thanks for watching and happy reefing. Until next time. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and share with a friend, and thank you for being part of the Coralus community.